Hey guys, thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. My name is Sean Elders. I am the founder and chief instructor of Pinnacle Combat Arts. I am a leading expert in military combatives, Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do, Filipino Kali, Silat, and several grappling arts. I also teach tactical firearms. Today, what we're going to do is a Filipino Kali knife to knife exercise called the Palo Sit Flow. This is part one. Let's get started. We're going to talk about the different grips, okay? So we have what they call standard grip, okay? Which is called sock sock grip. Then we have what they call pakal grip, which is the reverse grip. Some people call the standard grip, sock sock grip, fencing grip, and then we go to reverse grip, pakal grip. They also call this the ice pick grip as well. So keep that in mind when you're working on your trainer, when you're working with your trainer. Now, when we work with our partner with this exercise, this exercise has a lot of great attribute building uh, aspects to it. One is one person's standard grip, the other one's reverse grip. As you progress through this, it will be standard grip and reverse grip being switched all different variations. Now, the other aspect to the policy flow is that you are learning how to use going from footwork to different positioning, how to use your flow from right hand to the left hand, being able to make those transitions are super important. Starting off, what I will have you do is I'll start off with standard grip, he'll start off with reverse grip. And what, what's gonna take place is, as I thrust to his stomach, he's gonna hook it. So when I, when I make that hook, you need to make sure that your thumb is on the back end of the knife, okay, the thumbing the back end. When you do the hook, you're in this position here, okay? This is very important that you understand the, the, the structure of this. If my hand was over here when he came, he, he for instance, thrust at me, I would do a goon teen and, and slash through parrying this and then attacking a pie. This is based on the factor that I'm my transition of being attacked, my hand is up like this like this to my opponent. And I'm going to do a the palo soot to pass technique, okay? This is very important. All these, all these techniques build upon themselves. So when I'm in the position, I'm catching it like this, and then I'm gonna slap underneath, just like that. So if I feed him doing the same thing, he's going to hook it, and he's gonna slap right underneath my arm, underneath my elbow. Now you wanna make sure that it's underneath the elbow, not at the forearm, okay? If I do it at the forearm, there's lots of different techniques that I can do, okay, that will facilitate not as good of a situation. When I go here and he, he slaps it, we need to make sure that we're in this position and it's catching me, preventing me. This is called a percussion trap. We're using a percussion type of strike to create momentum to move my arm out of the way so he creates a line of attack. So I go here, one, two, and he stabs, you see? On my side, if I was doing it, he did the standard grip, I'm hooking it, see that? See how the point goes up? That's very important, okay? If my point is just like this, this gives him a little bit of leverage to be able to slide up, slide up, bam, and I'd have to be able to check it, which is good to know, which is good to, it's very important for you to understand. But as I hook this, I'm biting into his arm for a moment, okay? and then I'm slapping. So from this angle, if he stands on this side, okay, and I'm in this position, and he, as he comes at me, I'm hooking it like this, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm stepping with my left foot. So as he comes in, I'm going one, two, and then I'm going right for the, the kidney there, okay? So I go one, notice what I, the first thing I do is my structure. I wanna change my structure here, okay? I'm moving my butt, my butt back, moving my hips back to create a line here to create more space. Very important when we're doing this. So I hook it, I slap, and then I go for the kidney right here, okay? So with your partner, what you need to do is just do this exercise by itself to start your polo sit flow. I go one, two, and three. That's the first thing. One, two, and three. 
This exercise is called obesidaria training. Obesidaria training is where one person feeds another person over and over and over again so they can develop these skills, okay? So again, I go one, two, I slap underneath the arm, and then I stab to the kidney, okay? So that's the first part. We'll switch sides again, okay? So the next part I'm going to do is when I go to stab at him, he's going to check me. So he stabs, I hook it, I slap, and as I come in, come into attack, he's going to check me underneath his arm and do what they call the C-cup position. You see that? That's the C-cup, all right? So from this position on this side, okay, he attacks, one, two, three. He's checking me, okay? This, to me, in my opinion, is one of the best ways to check when you're in this position. Some people will cup up like this, okay? The problem is, is if I go here, I can slap, do a percussion strike going down, creating just enough space to pop that just to here so I could slide and attack. Now, there's always counters for him to do, but what we wanna do is, by doing the C-cup, this helps you to help, you, he, I have to completely disengage from this technique for me to move on. That gives him time to be able to you know, do an attack, and the attack he's going to do, when I'm in this position, he goes, one, two, three, checks me. He's gonna come in and come at my neck. Now, if he doesn't turn his shoulder right now, I don't even need to worry about it. Well, of course I have to worry about it, but when he gives me that number two, he's not in range. If his shoulder stays back, he's not in range to cut me. So he has to turn his shoulder, and then I engage it here. You see this? I engage it, and I cut up. Let's do it on this side now. So he goes one, two, checks me, C-cut position. Right in here, when he gives me that number, notice he'll turn his shoulder so he can get more range. When that happens, I'm gonna cut up on his arm, and I'm also going to check here, just like that. Do you see? So on this side, let me show you this technique by itself. Gives me the two, okay, and I'm here. It's very important that my, left, my right foot is back when he attacks me with the number two attack. See this? My knife hand cuts and I slice up. As I slice up, I'm going to pass, okay? So what I recommend you do is you break down each part of this into its positions, okay? What do I mean by that? So like I said at the beginning, when he thrusts, I'm gonna do this technique over and over and over again before he even tries to do the C-cup. From this side, same thing, he thrusts. I'm gonna pack this just coming in and doing that over and over and over again, just developing that skill. Then what you wanna do is we go to the next part. And the next part would be, he just practices, actually me, when I, I'm just gonna go like this, and then he practices going like that, and I would do the same thing, okay? So I go one, two, three. He just does that over and over again. He's practicing that one part. One, two, three. One, hooking it, slap, and then go. Some of you may go, well, why, aren't I, why don't I go like this? Okay, yes, you could do that. But the problem is, is that you're trying to get to that kidney shot, okay? You may not be in enough distance for me to do that. So if I go, pop, that's faster than if I try to do a slice there and then do this kidney shot. I wanna just go whoop, pow, pow, see that? And then try to get there. He's gonna check, he's gonna practice that. So what you could do is you could practice with your partner just going like this and he doesn't even use the knife and he all he's gonna do is I'm gonna try to shoot in for that hand and he's gonna practice the C-cup. You see that? Boom, just like that. So maybe it could be just like he does a thrust, you know, and you just practice this over and over and over. Boom, see that? Bam, okay? So, <clears throat> so from this position, now we move on to the next part. The next part would be one, two, and then he gives me the two. It's very important that I practice this. So what you can do is you can just practice doing, dealing with the number two and doing this upward guntine to a pass, and you would stab. So this is a technique of its own by itself. You see that, we'll do it from this angle. So he gives me that two and I go into this position. I wanna make sure my right foot's back and I cut in like that. So in the position, when he gives me that number two, we can just practice dealing with that, this cut right here and passing, 
okay? And you could practice also countering with a, with a shot to the chest. So when the number two comes in, I'm gonna go one and two. That's it, one and two, just over and over and over again, okay? So from this position, now we go on to the next part. The next part would be as I give the number one, he's gonna deal with it by catching it on the outside, okay? Is this the only way to deal with the number one coming at you? No, okay? This is just one way to deal with the number one coming in is on the outside sector, okay? He's gonna bring it down like this before he does the thrust. I'm gonna turn away and pull it like that. So let's do it on this side. So we're gonna go one, he pulls it down to try to create an open line. Or it could be, I'm trying to throw a punch with his hand. So when that one comes in, I could try to punch and he could be redirecting that out of the way. Then I practice doing the trapping on this, just like this, watch. I go one and then I slap it away. You've got to practice this over and over and over again. One and then two. He's got to learn how to practice picking it up from the outside. Okay, so you would both sides do this. You would practice this. So let's go through the drill now. So you're gonna go, he's gonna give me the number seven. I catch it, I hook it. He catches me here. He gives me a number two. I slice and I pass. As I pass, I fill that space with the number one. I slap it away and then we start over. He catches it, boom, just like that. Go nice and slow just so they can see. Okay, let's do it on the other side. So he gives me the... Okay, so now we'll do it slow. It goes in, hook, catch, go, two, pass. Go around here like this. I'm hooking it, see that? So in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down into parts. Let's talk, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some more inf information on how to do the polo suit and the extras that we can do, okay? So go ahead and take your partner, practice this, and we'll get back to it. This was part one of the polo suit drills. Hey guys, thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Thank you so much for your support. Hit the notification button so that you know when our new videos are coming out. I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for your support. Have a great day. Um, I lost my, hold on one second. Something happened here. I, did I lose my, this thing started dingling, dangling around. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the little foam thing? Do you see it anywhere? <laughs> yeah, oh well. <laughs> dingling, dangling, yeah, check my pants already. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not out in the wind anyways, that's what that's for.